So we've talked a lot in the last few lectures and videos about um, IP addresses and routes and all this stuff and hopefully some of you are thinking this is all very very complicated and why haven't we heard about this before? Well a lot of this process has been automated so that um, non-technical people can use networks to communicate with each other uh, and the nice thing is that it's always a, a good idea to try and solve a complex problem in an easy way not because we're lazy but because usually we will find a, a really good way of solving that particular problem there are tools that exist like trace route which uh, make finding the route of your traffic um, much much easier or iperf3 for identifying how much bandwidth and connection capability some connection has but one of the things that we are going that we used in the lab was this command called host and this was an example of a dns what it does is it looks up the name the human readable name of an ip address on a network and whilst we use this in a small lab context this happens a lot out in the internet but the reverse really this is dns this is the, the domain name system and it's a simple conversion between ip addresses and human readable addresses which we refer to as urls when you go to a browser and you type in a url the first thing that happens is that that url gets looked up and converted to an ip address and your browser your network machine from then on will communicate with that specific ip address when it shares information it doesn't use the human readable address it uses the ip address instead um, because it is a massive pain to do that manually and just like that configuring IP addresses on a network is another massive pain and so we have another automated tool to solve that this one is called DHCP or dynamic host configuration protocol now you can read through the details on the slide but just to be uh, just to go through the specifics when a new device joins a network it sends a packet out called DHCP discover and we'll send that out and eventually that packet will get delivered to a DHCP server on that network if the network has one that server will come back to that device with an IP address and it will offer it that IP address um, the device will then request the use of that IP address and finally the DHCP server will either acknowledge or not acknowledge the ACK or NAC packets um, whether that IP address is appropriate or not now like many of the other networking issues we've seen this IP address is not enforced it is requested so you can accept an IP address and then forcibly give yourself a completely different one and this is what allows people to pretend to be other people on the network um, you can essentially take someone's IP address off them um, 